so we derive an equation for the PBR, which is here. And yeah, we now got this one for pressure drop, which depends differential of pressure with the differential of mass. Of course, mass, the initial conditions, is when T equals or conversion equals zero, you got zero mass, of course. This is our F of 2, which is the Ergun derived equation. And we got our, when we mix our design equation and the rate law and some stoichiometry, we get this the differential of conversion versus the differential of mass. So you can see they actually depend on x and pressure. This one, remember, it, it was something like this some terms, and then you multiply it by this. So you can see these terms depend on x and this term depends on p. And once again, the Ergun equation, we got a, a little bit here, yeah, here is it. You got it that it depends on conversion and, of course, here's the drop in pressure. So we got two equations and probably you know by far, by, I don't know, simple mathematical methods, that when you got two independent equations and two independent variables, you can solve it. If you were to have only one, you could not do this because you will have one variable and a second variable and you have only one equation that describes how does that work but in this case we have both equations and we can solve it that's cool and we're going to see some uh, examples on how to solve it the only thing I want to tell you guys is that each of them because it's a differential equation uh, needs an initial condition so for example this will be typically conversion equals zero, then pressure or initial pressure equals P zero. In this case, it will be actually the same, X equals zero, and P equals initial pressure. And when you set the system, you will say that when conversion equals zero, you have zero mass. And once again, we have two type or two uh, styles on how to solve them. The analytical methods, or I call it by hand, when you use just like normal methods, is not that common uh, because it's so large uh, procedure. Uh, you take a lot of time, etc. And then this one here uh, with the software, it's the common one, and of course it's easier. If you know how to use the software, you know how to set all the variables. It's way easier than doing it by hand. But in this case. I bring you one special case on how to do it by analytical methods. So, if you remember this equation, this is the Ergun equation, we have been calling it F2 so far, uh, we have this term here. So if we can say that epsilon equals zero, or what does that mean, that the change in moles might be zero, uh, then this term will be zero and then this term will be 1 and anything multiplied by 1 is the same value here so as you can see we got the same differentials and alpha divided by 2 and the drop of pressure and how do we solve this? this is actually kinda easy if you know how to do first order differential equations uh, first thing first I just send this here this is dependent of y of course and I send this one here to the right and I got this here and this here. How do I integrate this? Well, we start from since y at the beginning is 1 because you know that the coefficient is p divided by p0 and the initial pressure is p0, the, co the coefficient will be 1. And the final pressure will be of course y, you don't know it. You will have a different p and you will have this p. So we integrate from 1 to y final y. Now that's for the left hand side, for the right, right hand side we have that of course we start with zero mass and we will finish with the whole mass of the reactor. Actually this is what we want to solve and of course if you can solve for final pressure and conversion will be also great. Now we integrate this y to the square and you still need to value these two concepts here and this one is easy because this is a constant, you take it away and this is W. Now you value here W square and then you subtract the 1 to the square which is 1 and why not send this to the right and we have this 
but we don't want it to the, uh, to the second power so we send it as a square root here and that's what we actually get y equals this number here so perfect we have and this will be normally a constant you can leave it here or you can send it here actually it's what I do here uh, just here yeah we used to have it here I send it here and we, we got alpha probably you're asking yourself what's alpha it's this huge number here it's the length of the pack bed you should know that by far the area you just need to know the radius or diameter the porosity and the difference or the blank spaces here the density of the catalyst which is the actual density of the material and the pressure cube now that's one first thing you're probably once again asking what's this beta zero and this is a huge value here actually beta zero is the mass flux which is essentially the molar flow no mass flow in area then once again this concept the porosity times now to the third power initial density this is one if you use standard or international uh, system the diameter of the particle you know you know to have it because if you have this one and a small one and a super small one well of course the this will be changing the actual pressure drop sorry and what else do we have actually the higher diameter of particle uh, will lower the beta and what happens if you lower beta you lower alpha and what happens when you lower alpha you actually increase this value here so the final pressure drop will increase what else do we have here well the correction if you're using laminar is this one if you're using turbulent is this one and yeah essentially that's everything guys uh, you got this final pressure just depending on the conditions of the pellets which is you need to have the diameter of the pellet you need to have the density of the pellet the porosity of the pellet and what else do we have here well the properties of the gas that we're or the feed you need to know the mole flow the flux what else uh, the viscosity here and um, yeah essentially it's everything guys and of course you will get your mass so this is the case when you do know the mass or you can find out backwards if you have the drop in pressure you will find out the mass so yeah that's the analytical method it's the the only case you can use this easy method is when this concept may be approximated to zero if it is not zero you will need a numerical method but I'm going to talk about that in the next video What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.